Hey and welcome to the On Buttons coverage of Windows Phone 7 series which was announced today at Mobile World Congress. I'm Neil Berman and I'm going to talk about what Windows Phone 7 means for iPhone, Android, Blackberry, other smartphone platforms and uh, what we can expect to see perhaps in the future from Microsoft based on this platform. So let's start with a bit of history and Windows Phone has been kind of having a bit of a rough time in recent years. Um, some of the other smartphone players have been coming out with much stronger platforms, so notably the iPhone and, and Android, and of course uh, BlackBerry and, and Palm with uh, Palm OS. Um, and in the face of that, it's kind of difficult to even say that Microsoft's been competing well in this space. Certainly, RIM has been winning a lot of uh, market share at the expense of Windows Phone in the corporate space. And of course, the iPhone has been totally dominating in the consumer space. So, you know, there was a lot of excitement uh, today around the launch of Windows Phone 7 series and uh, certainly um, Microsoft brought all the bells and whistles to this party. So let's talk about the interface which for Microsoft is actually a very new departure for the Windows Phone platform but internally um, it's actually based on an interface called Metro which had started off development in Windows Media Center and then subsequently in Zune HD which has a very, very beautiful interface if you ever use the Zune HD. It's very crisp text on a high definition screen um, and looks very different to um, the iPhone OS or Android or the BlackBerry. So compared to those um, other smartphones, um, uh, the, the iPhone certainly has a very beautiful interface, um, but certainly showing that, that it came out in 2007. And I wouldn't be surprised to see Apple starting to invest a bit more in, in maybe bringing that operating system um, up a notch, certainly in response to what Microsoft has done with uh, Windows Phone 7. Um, Android, I think, is in a pretty good space right now. You know, there's a lot of energy behind that platform and a lot of energy to um, improve that user I experience. It's already come a, a very long way since the original T-Mobile G1, and I'm sure that will um, go from strength to strength in the next few years. Um, it, it's RIM that I'm kind of more concerned about in this space. Uh, the BlackBerry OS is kind of quite pretty on the outside, but once you get past that, that home screen, it uh, really is a, a, a maze of menus and, uh, and, and, and kind of scrolling navigation through those, those text menus. Looking at some of the social networking aspects of Windows Phone 7, it's quite remarkable how well Microsoft seems to have integrated Windows Live and Facebook into, um, into this new launch. So in what other phones consider to be a contacts page, Microsoft has its People Hub and the People Hub can be updated dynamically from Facebook and uh, and from Windows Live. So you can see status updates, you can see pictures coming straight into your Pictures Hub and your, and your People Hub, um, which is really quite phenomenal when you think that other phones, other smartphone platforms tend to look at social networking as a self-contained app. Um, Microsoft has instantly made that seem um, like a very limiting approach to have such a, a, a ring-fenced um, usage of social networking. So, yes, yeah, certainly something very, very cool that, that, that we saw today in, in Windows Phone 7. Um, something else that we saw that everyone was hoping for was Zune integration. So this competes directly with the iPhone, um, with, with its iTunes integration. And what Microsoft has done is they've taken um, the Zune platform, completely brought it into Windows Phone 7. Um, it looks like you're going to be able to actually buy media directly from the, the Zune marketplace to uh, the Windows Phone 7 device, um, which is a great step forward for, for Microsoft. Um, and uh, there's also syncing to the Zune desktop application. Um, so you can bring your media and your, your, your pictures onto the, on, onto the phone in that way using the, the very, I, I guess, pretty beautiful, uh, frankly, Zune desktop application, which again, um, you know, for, for the people who have used it, a lot of people come away saying it is a more beautiful experience than, um, than iTunes from, from a desktop point of view. Apple showed us that with the iPhone, gaming is possible on, on, on a phone platform that's not just a Nintendo or Sony dedicated gaming platform. And, and they did that very successfully, and there have been some great gaming releases for, for, for the iPhone. Um, haven't seen this so much for BlackBerry and Android, although you know, there are games on those platforms. They're just not quite as 
um, a, 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 as I get developed as, as some of the iPhone games have been. Now, what Microsoft's looking to do with Windows Phone 7 is take the Xbox Live platform and they've brought that into Windows Phone 7, which um, I don't want to underestimate, <laughs> understate how um, phenomenal this this idea really is. So, um, you know, we're way beyond the days that the that, that phones had very basic displays and basic internals. Um, these Windows Phone 7 devices are going to have fast processors, um, very similar to the iPhone and and and, uh, and some of the Android phones that we've been seeing. They're going to have um, you know, dedicated graphics units inside, and they will be capable of running really good games. So we haven't actually seen um, what kind of games we're going to see on the Xbox Live. Um, hub of uh, Windows Phone 7, um, but we can certainly expect to see some kind of integration with Xbox Live um, games, so potentially there'll be um, kind of offshoot of a popular um, Xbox franchise, you know, such as uh, a, a game like um, Halo or, or Call of Duty, and maybe you'll be able to play a, a kind of sub part of that game on the phone. Um, you know, I think this is certainly very, very exciting. And, and of course, on the, on the Windows Phone 7 devices, there are a, at least three dedicated buttons at the bottom, which are the home button, the search button, and the, and, and the back button. So um, leaving aside that a certain number of devices probably will have dedicated keyboards, which will be even better for gaming, at least if you have those three basic buttons, then compared to some of the other touch devices, um, or for example, the iPhone that doesn't have any, um, gaming can be challenging on the iPhone. So you're, you're, you're moving it around all the time for the accelerometer, it becomes difficult to see the screen, actually blocking part of the screen as well. So um, Xbox Live on the uh, Windows Phone 7 platform looks pretty exciting. Moving more into the, the, the more traditional Windows Phone environment, which is the, the corporate environment, um, that is going to now ironically be quite a challenge for Microsoft because um, the company has lost so much market share to, to RIM. Um, they're also losing some market share to Android for companies that have migrated across to Gmail. And there are also some companies that have taken on the iPhone as well. So um, Microsoft actually has a lot of work to do here because it's much harder to get an enterprise to migrate a smartphone platform from one platform to another than it is to get a consumer to just go in and upgrade their phone. So, you know, a lot of companies plan their, their smartphone platforms for a good couple of years ahead, make an investment in one particular platform, and, and for many of those companies it's BlackBerry, which, uh, you know, in, 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 in involves quite a lot of uh, setup work to, to, to actually get the, uh, the, the, the BlackBerry server going, and, 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 and once it's there, it's almost like it's kind of embedded there and it's there to stay. So I think we need to see what, what Microsoft does in that space, if they're going to replicate the, the encryption and, and kind of remote wiping um, functionality that, 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 uh, that makes a BlackBerry platform so, so popular in, in the corporate environment. Um, of course, what Microsoft is going to bring very strongly with Windows Phone 7 is going to be an, a new version of Microsoft Office for the phone, um, integration with SharePoint and, and with online services, which is uh, a very, very powerful and, and, and compelling offering and always has been for Windows Phone, um, it's just always been challenging to figure out how you actually use some of those applications on a small screen. So I started to think maybe we're going to see this interface in some kind of slightly different form in a tablet later this year. Again, this is total speculation <laughs> on my part, but um, I just, I, I, I can't see that that will not happen. I mean, we have uh, uh, an operating system that's clearly very, very beautiful, um, very clearly designed for touch devices. We've seen that already on large screen devices uh, with Media Center and on some of the HP Touch Smart de devices that, that use Media Center. So having something in the middle, especially now that Apple's come out with their iPad, it, it sounds like a logical next move for Microsoft during this year. But I guess it's up to their hardware partners to see what's going to happen with that. It certainly looks like a very exciting year ahead for Microsoft and We'll see how some of its competitors deal with that. I'm Neil Berman for The On Button. Check out our website at theonbutton.com and also our videos. We have a YouTube channel, which is theonbutton.com.